Hey there. It's, uh, it's peak week. It's peak week. This is the drop set. Episode 260. Let's hit it. Yes, hello everybody. We are back. It is peak week. I am Darren Starr. Thank you for joining me. This is the Drop Set episode 260. Holy crap, that's a big number. Um, I'm tired, people. Um, Wow, we'll get into it. Um, So uh, if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for joining me. Appreciate it. Uh, If this uh, kind of thing seems up your alley, give the video a like. Consider subscribing. If you're listening out in uh, audio-only land in Podcastville, thank you. Appreciate that. Please Leave a review, leave a rating wherever you can, share these episodes on social media wherever appropriate if you like what you're seeing here or hearing. Thank you. Much appreciated. Um, so let's dig in here. Um, there's a lot to cover in uh, in the outline here. So this is uh, episode 260, Getting Stage Ready Part 2. Last week was part one, and uh, it was about kind of getting ready for this and trying to reset post-travel Everything was a mess. I just kind of needed to get back to some kind of baseline level of function. Um, Spoiler alert, I'm still kind of waiting to get back to some baseline level of function right now. I'm mostly there, but there's still some stuff that's not quite right. And as of recording this, it's Thursday. I am two days out. This will get posted tomorrow, the day before the show. So there's a little bit of a time delay here. I wanted to wait to record this until this late in the week, though, just so that I had some more to talk about. There's more stuff that has definitive, um, that's definitive, that's already happened, that's in the past, and fewer unknowns. So I'm going to be talking about less hypothetical stuff than if I had recorded this earlier in the week. So it is peak week time. What did end up, what did end up happening last week? Things kind of sorted themselves out for the most part, but still nothing really fell into place the way that I was hoping. There are still some issues hanging out there. So let's itemize those. Um, concerns going into peak week here. Um, the first one is making weight. So that's a low grade concern. We're going to go over some numbers here shortly, but it's still in the back of my mind. Um, lack of sleep is really the biggest one. I'm just not sleeping through the night at all. I'm getting up like every hour on the hour, waking up exhausted, taking naps all throughout the day, usually a couple of times a day. The naps are very high quality. That works. It's sleeping through the night that is it is the issue. Um, as a re- direct result of that, training performance has been off. I've managed a couple of decent days, which is better than I had at the tail end of my last prep. I've said it many times here. You know, I got up on stage at my last show in 2021 looking very much like a guy who didn't have a good workout for the last six weeks of, of his prep. It kind of feels that way here. But if I think back to it, it's like, no, I had a couple of decent sessions this week. Nothing was great. Nothing was really gangbusters, but it was okay. It was good. It was good. It was better than okay. It was good. A few of them were really struggling. There were some days where I was just sleepwalking. Some days I, I was sleepwalking into the gym. I got started and I, I was able to get a little bit of juice going, but uh, it certainly wasn't every day. Um, GI performance is still off. Guts just not quite happy, just a little bubbly all around. Um, and then also I'm thinking about how to handle the carb up intelligently as I approach these next couple of days here. I've not started that yet as of, what is it? 2.50 PM Eastern standard time, sorry, Eastern daylight time on Thursday. So that is all going to come later. So let's dig into it here. So the first concern I have is making weight. For reference, the cap um, for my height, for my height class in classic physique is 209 pounds. So, um, as of Tuesday, it had crept down my morning weight to 200.8. No problem, right? Four days out, I had that same weigh in again today. It was up a little bit yesterday, 201.6, I think, something like that. All kinds of room. But on Tuesday, it was about 206 around the time I'd be weighing in. And on Wednesday, it was around 207.8. So, and it's it's still TBD what it's going to be today. I'm still about an hour, two hours away from having that number. So um, I suspect based on the trends that I'm seeing today, it's probably going to be around 206-ish, something like that. Um, but a lot of what I've been doing here for the past 10 to 12 days is really getting my Timing down, watching the trends on what these numbers are doing throughout the day, being more precise on my water intake, seeing what higher water intake does to the weight. Spoiler alert, it drops it. Um, So as long as you have some time, uh, like more water, you know, water is a natural diuretic. It's going to make you expel more as well. So 
Keeping the water intake higher keeps the weight a little bit lower throughout the day. You know, it's probably okay. I'm I'm not super worried about it. That's why I call this a low grade concern. Um, but if if you know if I happen to be like you know today, if I'm two oh seven six two oh eight around weigh in time, like that tells me like I absolutely don't want to start carving up before I check in for the show tomorrow. Uh, check ins open at five, so, um, so I've got to make that weight at five p.m. So it doesn't matter what you weigh in the morning. You've got to make it at 5 p.m. So um, I'm just going to wait to the carb up, uh, wait wait until after the check in to carb up, just to give me one less thing to be stressed about because my stress is through the roof already. And if I can just eliminate that as a concern and say, okay, I think I'm going to be fine, should be okay, should have enough headroom and some clearance to be under that cap weight, then afterwards we'll carb up. I think that's a smart move. So I also probably shouldn't need a ton of carbs anyway for reasons that we'll talk about here. There are some good news. Um, so. I did increase, I think I mentioned last week, I increased my carbs one night just thinking it might help me sleep a little bit better, and it did. That was a one-off. That only happened once. But what I did notice is that with those increased carbs, my weight kept ticking down. So I bumped them up a little bit more, and the weight continued to hold steady or tick down. Okay, this is a good sign. I like that. So now I'm at about 300 grams per day, um, which is good because... What you really want to be in in peak week is you want to be as lean as possible and then kind of get yourself back up to maintenance calories for peak week. I'm not too far off from that. The only issue is I'm not as lean as possible, Um, but I'm thinking ahead post-show and how I want things to happen there. So um, this means I'm going to need a less aggressive carb up overall because I'm not as flat and depleted. And it also means that I'm probably going to have an easier rebound post-show because it's not like I'm at 100 grams of carbs daily right now or anything like that. Um, I did a, my last low carb day would have been Sunday, I believe. So, which would, would have been at about 130 grams. So ever since then, it's been, you know, 270, 290, 300 ish. It's been kind of creeping up in that range here. So um, basically I've just been taking it day by day. And if the weight continues to cooperate, I give myself a little bit more and see what happens. So, um, so I would like to be leaner. That's the only issue. But also I knew if I had starved myself this week and really tried to bring the pain a little bit, I wasn't really going to be visually that much leaner in you know four days. It's just not going to make that much of a difference. So I uh, decided to make a trade off and say like, you know what, let's do this. Let's just get the carbs up, make everything else a little bit easier for the back half of this week. So the big issue here for this week and for the last, you know, a couple and a half weeks has been just lack of sleep, lack of quality sleep. Um, I have tried everything on this list here, <laughs> Unisom, CBD, hydroxyzine, melatonin, a ZMA style powdered blend, it's zinc, magnesium, there's some melatonin in that as well. Uh, Benadryl, just nothing works. Nothing makes a difference at all. It is a very weird kind of feeling to like take that stuff, feel kind of like, oh, all right, I'm kind of dozing off. Like it hits me, I feel it. I lay down, I fall asleep almost immediately, like always. I'm just up in an hour every single time, every single time. Um, Get up, pee, back to bed, right back to sleep, up again an hour later. It's the most annoying fucking thing in the world. And it's just without that lack of continuous quality sleep, you just wake up and like trying to go and get in a productive workout under those circumstances, it just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. It's just, it's so hard. So certainly not able to perform at my best. So there's been a lot of napping. The morning lifts have really been lackluster. And so I'm wondering if also there's been a little bit of lean tissue loss just because that training intensity has dropped down, which might be what's influencing the scale to continue dropping as well. Hence another reason why I am uh, also just increasing carbs a little bit, just to try and preserve that a little bit more. Um, So unfortunately there's no solution for this. Um, I just need to get the show behind me and let stress dissipate a little bit. The stress of the show is adding to it. Uh, there's, there's more than just that. Uh, but, uh, th- that's what really is causing the issue. And so if I can just get that stress to come down a little bit, unfortunately, it's just not going to happen before the show. So, um, I wish there was more I could do. Unfortunately, I've tried everything. I just got nothing. So training performance is another concern. So this is directly tied to sleep and all just, so just, you know, I've been in prep for 22 weeks. I'm fucking tired. You know, as it says, extremely irritable in the gym, no patience at all. This just plays into being tired as well. Like I'm just, I'm sick of seeing the same people every day. I'm sick of having the same conversations with people every day. And it's just like, uh, I'm just uh, over it. I'm over it. Like I says, want to set the building on fire pretty much. Yeah. So, um, my last workout was today. It was just an upper body pump session. Went pretty well. Um, pretty happy with how things looked. Um, I was ready to set the building on fire again, however, because the gym has a, uh, 
a group fitness room that's good for posing and they have their class schedule posted on the app. And so I went in at a specific time knowing that when I was wrapping up my workout, that room was going to be empty. Lo and behold, they threw another class in there. So I couldn't use it. So, um, I was lucky to have not burned the building down. So I needed some time off a week or three after the show, um, to reset. And the thing is like, I know it. I know I'm not going to be after this show. I'll be like, that was such a great experience. Awesome. I can't wait to get back in the gym. I'm like, I could be, it was such a great experience. That was awesome. Fuck the gym. I need a break. I need a break. I'm not that guy that's just going to go every day like, oh, I need it for my routine. No, I got so much other shit to do. Like, I, I would love to take a week off from the gym and just focus on doing other stuff for a little bit. I got a lot on my plate right now. And so if I can just eliminate a daily workout from my schedule, from my calendar, man, that's going to be a huge win. I will love it. I will not miss it. After a week or so, I might. And then we'll get back to it. GI performance. So I wouldn't say, here we go. This is the whole TMI portion of the show here. Um, not constipated. It's just feeling like I'm not really cleared out or anything like that. You know, stomach is just generally not happy, constantly feeling just at least a little bit bloated or distended. It's there most of the day, but not when I'm fasted in the morning. So I'm wondering how I might want to adjust things a little bit based on that. Like I can't be afraid to eat. Like I'm going to wake up, I'm going to need some carbs in me, but I'm also wondering if I just go really aggressive on carbs the night before, um, and then just go a little bit more protein and fat the morning of just have less stuff sitting in my stomach. That could be an option. So it's something I'm considering. I probably won't do it, but it is an option I'm throwing. I probably won't do it just because I haven't trialed that. So I don't know what to expect from it. And I don't want to do anything different on show day that I haven't done leading up to the show. Um, and I also think like this, what I'm feeling here, I'm feeling it much more than it shows in photos or videos. So um, I think it's probably okay if I can just like get it out of my head. Um, I did notice this morning in the gym, like as part of my uh, pump up routine, I was doing vacuums, I was doing abdominal contractions, I felt pretty good doing that. So I think if I just regularly keep that up throughout the day, um, I think the act of doing that kind of helps tighten things up a little bit. This is also entirely stress related. Um, everything related to the stomach is 100% related to the stress that I'm dealing with right now. So getting some sleep would certainly help too. Handling the carb up, how do I want to do this? So I'm going to wait, like I said, until after the check-in, and that's just largely to mitigate the stress of worrying about getting under the weight cap. Again, it's probably fine, but I'm going to roll the dice on the sure thing. I guess that's the opposite of rolling the dice. I'm going to opt not to roll the dice and take the sure thing. There we go. Did I mention I'm two days out? Like, please forgive me in my brain. Um, I'm going to stick with rice as my primary carb source for the extra carbs that I'm adding in here. Um, I'm planning on adding some fats at night to also um, hold that carb load. It will slow down digestion and absorption a little bit. So I'm going to add a good chunk of fats, probably just through peanut butter, um, just because it's very last minute. Like I'm not building up this glycogen throughout a handful of days. It's all coming in at the last minute. I don't want it to all go out of my system overnight. So some fats in there to help hold that is a smart move. Um, I did attempt um, earlier this week just in an attempt to play the volume game and try to see if it would settle my stomach down a little bit. I tried cream of rice instead of oats um, for meal one, which I use cream of rice all the time. I just haven't touched it in a little while. Um, but the GI was worse, actually. I think it actually missed the fiber from the oats. Um, and So it would make sense to switch and go with a lower volume approach, but I'm going to stick with the oats for uh, for show day. Because, um, I, I mean, it's, it's a large volume, but also, like, it processes pretty well. Um, I have time. Um, if I wake up and eat at 6.30 or 7, I don't really anticipate getting up on stage until 11 or 11.30. So there's going to be time for that meal, another one, and then some other nibbles backstage before heading out. So that meal one will be a distant afterthought by the time I'm up on stage. Uh, the amounts of this carb up are TBD. I don't know yet. Not sure. We're going to play it by ear here. Um, there's going to be two higher carb meals after checking in on Friday and then two higher carb meals on Saturday morning prior to stage. I'm going to pull protein back on those a little bit. So um, just to help keep things tighter. That's the idea here. Um, like less volume in the midsection, uh, less volume in the stomach um, just to help keep the midsection a little bit tighter is the idea. Um, let's talk cardio this week. So I did the regular amount through Monday, which is a 30-minute walk in the morning, 30 minutes post-workout, 30-minute walk in the afternoon. Um, on Tuesday, kept those walks in. Post-workout cardio dropped to 20 minutes. On Wednesday, it dropped to 10 minutes. I skipped the afternoon walk. I actually didn't mean to. I just slept through it. I was taking a nap. Um, and then uh, today, two days out, Thursday, 
20 minute walk in the morning, no cardio after the workout, and then a, another 20 minute walk um, in the afternoon. Um, basically, you know, weather was nice. It was pretty casual. It was fine. So um, Friday is TBD. I'll probably take Taz out for a 20 minute walk in the morning, and that'll probably be about it. So what hasn't changed this week? That's that's the thing because a lot of people have this idea about peak week. I work with um, clients who will ask me when they're a year or two years out from their show, what's peak week going to be like? I'm like, don't worry about it. Like, what's it been like for me so far? I haven't really changed anything. I've tapered down my cardio. That's it so far. I haven't changed anything else other than like, you know, increasing my carbs just as a trial. Um, but there aren't drastic changes to make here. It's fine. To, if you're making drastic changes, you're making mistakes. Don't do that don't do that. So my water intake has been the same every day. It's been 25 ounces between all meals, double that during a lift. Um, I'm going to taper it down Friday only because I'm not lifting. And so that will just be the 25 ounces between meals one and two instead of the 50 where my, where my lift would normally be. Um, other than that, not tapering it down. Uh, sodium has been unchanged all week. I'm actually going to increase that after checking on Friday with those two higher carb meals. Um, and then Saturday morning as well, we'll bring in more sodium then too. Uh, and then uh, a common tactic, which is really gross, but a little shot of salt water, like quarter teaspoon of salt, um, just in some water, take it as a shot. It's really nasty, but um, it will help. Sodium is your friend when it comes to um, quality muscle contractions, getting a pump. Um, you need sodium, you need fluids, you need glycogen, you need all those things. So the last thing we wanna do is be depleting water, depleting sodium, those are giant mistakes that people make just because they don't understand how the body works. Oh, the plan for show day. So um, there's going to be two meals prior to stage time. Um, they're going to be higher in carbs, lower in protein. Meal one's normal, which is going to be Greek yogurt and oats. Typically, my Greek yogurt portion is 400 grams, which is a huge serving. I'm probably going to drop that down to 200. Um, and then oats, I've been doing, I did 80 grams this morning. Probably keep that at 80, maybe bump it up to as high as 100. We'll see how it goes. And then meal two, it's usually my final meal of the day, turkey um, with black beans. I'm going to add the rice in with that, and that's just going to be my uh, pre pre-judging meal. And uh, I will plan on repeating meal two ad nauseum throughout the day, um, just because I know how it makes me feel, um, which is good. It's very, it's a meal that's very convenient to just add rice to in bulk as I need to. Um, and uh, I can add sodium to it as needed as well, like plenty of it. So it's, it's just a good delivery vehicle for getting in the stuff that I need. I'm going to have rice, cakes, uh, peanut butter, and some dried fruit backstage for delays and also for the last minute sugar load. Dried fruit is, you know, it's, I've been kind of trialing some of that this week um, as an extra carb source as well. Works well. Um, and it's just a quick shot of some fructose in there um, to get into the system. So, um, and then let's talk post-show while we're at it as well, just because I'm already thinking about this. So, um, immediately post-show, um, I've got an Airbnb in Chattanooga. We're going to go back there and hang with the dogs and probably just have some food delivered. Honestly, I don't even really care what it is. And it's not like, I'm so hungry. I don't care what it is. It's like, I'm not really after anything in particular. I just want to be able to sit down and enjoy something and just celebrate the fact that the show's over. That's it. That's all I'm looking for. Um, I've got an updated meal plan I put together last night for next week that's already ready to go. Um, it's planned out. I shopped for it today. Ready to rock. It's not too dissimilar from what I'm doing now. Just changed up a couple of meals. Gave me an option, uh, a, a backup option for a third meal if I wanted something different. Um, and keeping a couple the same. So nothing, nothing super crazy. Nothing wild. Um, we will be returning to Oregon soon. The last two trips I've made by myself. Um, the next one, my wife will go with me as well. I'm just waiting details and news on what's going on with my mom before we spring for tickets. Um, but um, because of that, um, I floated the idea before about doing the national show in Chattanooga, which is two weeks after this show. Um, it's simply not in the cards. Whether there's a qualification um, in store for me or not, which honestly, I'm not holding my breath for that. <laughs> just to be clear, I'm not going in thinking like, I'm going to dominate this show. I'm like, if, if I get a top two finish, it's going to be probably because it was a fairly weak class. And that's not me um, trying to be humble. That's like genuinely what I think. So um, that's, that's grade A honesty for you. That's what it is. Uh, but that show will simply not be happening. It's just something I can't do. This prep needs to be over. I need to focus on family related stuff um, after this show. So that's where I'm at, folks. That's it. Um, it's, uh, 
it's kind of a bittersweet end to this prep um, because I feel like I got a lot done. Like I accomplished a lot and everything just kind of fell apart in the last five weeks due to extenuating circumstances. So once again, I kind of feel like I'm limping to the finish line a little bit. And I don't like that feeling, um, but I'm going to uh, continue to take the final steps and do what I can to, you know, put something on stage that I can look back on and say like, yeah, it wasn't my absolute best, but I'm proud of the effort that I put into that. So, um, and just persevering and getting through it is, is a bit of a, uh, I, I, I feel like I've kind of earned a participation trophy at the very least, just for that reason. Um, not that that's what I'm after or anything like that, but if you've been listening to this podcast long enough, you know that I'm not really too worked up over show results. Like I want to come in and beat, um, the version of me that was up on stage in 2021. And I've already done that. So that's truly all I really care about. Um, and so this is going to be like, I didn't feel like my peak week and my show day um, in 2021, I was not coaching myself, of course. Um, I was following a, a different protocol. It was much more conventional. There was carb lo- or there was um, water loading, water tapering. I just didn't really feel like I had a good show day experience. Like I, I couldn't really get much of a pump before going on stage. wasn't really super impressed with how things felt. Definitely wasn't impressed with how things looked. So right now, what I want to do is nail these last 48 hours so that I can get up on stage and feel like, yeah, okay, you know, the tail end of prep wasn't great, but I got this part down. So that's really my goal here. So um, that's all I got for this one, folks. We'll be back with 261 next week. Um, Probably do a recap of this, I would imagine. So I thank you for hanging in there. Um, Once again, YouTube audience, subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, questions, anything you got, fire away for me. Um, For the audio-only listeners, thank you as well. Much appreciate it. Um, That's it, folks. That's it. Peace out. Catch you next week.